Hi, it's Deb again. In this lesson, we will take the principles of netiquette and apply them specifically to best practice within emails. I've worked in office environments for many years and trust me, being able to send a good email to start or maintain relationships or even being able to use email to rectify issues or challenges you are facing makes life a whole lot easier in the long run. As you transition into university, we'll probably start to use email a lot more within this new professional environment. So a good understanding of the nuances and differences in etiquette via email will help you while you study and provide you with a head start when representing yourself to potential employers. So let's get started. Despite the growth and prominence of mobile messengers and chat apps, email is an integral part of life. With the increase in remote work and study, emails have never been more important to keep production and connection across many industry sectors going. In 2020, the number of global email users amounted to 4 billion and is set to grow to 4.6 billion users in 2025. So you can see, it's really important to learn the best way to use email when starting university and the differences in communication tone and method needed in comparison to WhatsApp group chats or social media posts. I'll guide you through some scenarios and explain the reasoning for each tip. We'll also look at email structure as well as the tone. In a world of instant messaging, DMs and 24-7 chat box, it's easy to take for granted that someone is waiting for your message so they can reply instantly. In reality, especially in educational and professional settings, it simply doesn't work like that. People are busy and in most cases won't have the chance to reply within a 24 hour period. So after you press send, just relax and give the recipient a chance to get back to you in good time. If say after two or three working days you haven't heard back, a quick, polite follow-up is okay to send. The first question you should always ask yourself is does this message need to be communicated through an email? If you have a simple, quick question that you can ask in person, do that instead. Not only will you get an immediate response, but you'll have a better chance of being remembered by the person you reach out to. If you can't reach out in person, but you have something that's urgent, personal, or warrants a longer discussion, email is still not the best option. Instead, consider reaching out by phone. Alternatively, you can reach out by email, but to schedule a call for a longer conversation. If you have a quick question or message that can be briefly conveyed, and we're talking no more than one or two paragraphs, email then is definitely the way to go. The person you're reaching out to should be able to look at the email subject line within their inbox and have a general idea of what the message is going to be about. Always avoid vague subjects like hey or FYI or simply leaving the subject the heading blank. Instead, try for something more specific like following up on last Wednesday's lecture. If you're reaching out to a contact who doesn't know you very well or to a lecturer of a large class who isn't likely to recognise your name straight away, you can also include information that introduces who you are, for example, the module or class or course that you are studying. And one final note here that's really important, never add capital letters in a subject heading with a demand or action. This can come across as if you're shouting at the recipient and displaying cyberbullying attributes. Nobody wants to be shouted at, and this is really bad email etiquette. Your email will stand out, but for all the wrong reasons. After the subject heading, the first line in your email should always include a greeting. It can be as simple as, Dear Dr. Smith, or just hello if you don't have a specific name. And use your best judgment when it comes to calling them by their first name. It's generally good etiquette to only use first names if the person has already introduced themselves in such a manner, or where you have met or had previous conversations. Otherwise, err on the side of caution and use a more formal title until you've built up a relationship. And while it's tempting to go directly into the question or concern on your mind, Take a minute to briefly remind the person you're writing to who you are and what your connection to them is. For example, I'm a student of biomedical studies and I attended your class yesterday afternoon. Always remember to say please and thank you as necessary throughout your email. Instead of saying, for example, give me the questions or where's the results from the assessment lab, try saying something like, Whenever you have a chance, if you could please send me the link to the questions or guide me to my results from the lab, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. 
And don't forget, this sort of tone applies whether you're emailing at the university or if you are seeking answers in your personal life. Professional doesn't mean robotic. You can portray a friendly tone by using contradictions. For example, I'm writing to, or I understand that, and I was hoping you might be able to signpost me in the right direction. Lecturers, hiring managers, and anyone professional you're emailing is most likely going to be busy. If your email is too long-winded, chances are it will get skipped right over. Aim for short and sweet. Your basic email format should be, one, introduce yourself and the issue, two, tell them what attempts you've made to correct the issue, and three, ask for any help that you need. Make sure that the font is basic and readable. Feel free to add in a signature that shows your full name, email and phone number and any other information or achievements you wish people to know about. Acronyms can be hard to understand and make you sound overly conversational. Always write out your email in full English form, even if you know the professional contact you're reaching out to. Always proofread your email before pressing send. Look over your message for any grammar or spelling issues that stick out that you perhaps didn't notice to start off with. And finally, don't forget to sign off as this is great etiquette and prevents the message from feeling rude, rushed or abrupt. Use one of the examples on screen now or whatever feels natural to you. Emailing allows you to articulate thoughts in a logical, precise and polite way to get the fastest and most effective response. It's a great tool and skill to have and I hope this lesson will help you get started as you begin to manage your new inbox and build connections across the university. Thank you for listening.